The last problem I want to talk about in terms of greedy algorithm, and here I will not do the formal proof or anything like that, but the last problem is some problem known as Hoffman coding. Okay, Hoffman coding. And this is a very important problem in uh, compression and in uh, binary coding. Uh, for example, it is used in, in uh, MP3 file uh, compression uh, schemes. And it's a very, very powerful uh, tool. And the algorithm, it's a very simple algorithm for a very, for a very well-defined problem that uses greedy algorithm is very efficient as well in terms of running time. So what is the problem that Hoffman coding tries to deal with? Imagine that we have a string w, or let's, yeah, string w here. Uh, let's say whose length is, let's say, 100, 145 million characters, okay, 145 million letters. And the letters are either A or B or C or D, okay? You get a very, very long string of A, B, C, D, and, and Ds. And our job, our task is to turn W into binary representation. So represent W as a binary string. How, how, what does it mean to represent W as a binary string? We need to find what, what this means is find for each of the four letters, the four letters, A, B, C, D, binary code words, and use these code words to represent w okay so we need for example to find a equals some you know binary string b is another binary string and so on now the objective function here objective function what is it that we are trying to optimize we want to minimize the length of the binary encoding of w okay so let us make this more concrete maybe with a few with an example okay so again remember someone gives me a long string in this case i'm trying to say the string is four letters a b c d if this is dna a c t g and someone gives me a genomic sequence that has 145 million nucleotides in it. Every nucleotide is a letter A, C, T, G. They want me to compress it by first turning it into a binary string of zeros and ones. And, but they want that string of zeros and ones to be the smallest possible. So we have 145 uh, million, okay? So one possible solution, one solution, or first solution is, let us actually encode A as uh, zero zero b as zero one c as one zero d as one one since there are four letters we need two bits to represent all of them in four different uh, code words right so we have zero 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 one one zero one one so now what will becomes the length of the encoded of the encoded string well the string itself was 145 million and each one of these let uh, 145 million letters, and each one of these letters now is replaced by two bits. So now it's times two, it becomes 290 million bits. Okay. Can we do better than that? Can I represent A and B and C and D uh, using a different, uh, different uh, code words? The answer is, the answer has to do with what are the frequencies of A and B and C and D and W, okay? So remember that the length of W is 145 million. Let's imagine that the frequency of A or the count of A, how many times instead of a frequency, let, just so that we don't confuse them, let me actually look at the count of A, 
How many times does A appear in this letter? Imagine it appears 80 million times. What's the count of B? Let's imagine that the count of B is 20 million times. What's the count of C? Imagine that it is 40 million times. So what we have here, 140 already. So let's get D, 5 million times. So now we see that the four letters are not distributed uniformly. It's not appearing with equal frequencies there. So we have A to be A is the most frequent, C is the second most frequent, B is the third most, and D is the least frequent. So maybe we can do better than 290 million bits by giving very, sh we're giving very short sources where greedy starts kicking in here. Let's look at the most frequent letter and give it the shortest possible code word. Go to the second most frequent letter, give it the second shortest possible code and so on. So for example, given this, since A is the most frequent, let me code word for A. I can choose the code word for A to be one, one bit, right? It's, it's the shortest possible code word I can give for A. C is the second most frequent. Let me give it another short, the second shortest key, keyword, uh, a code word, which is just one bit. Now I go to B is the third most frequent. I ran out of code words of length one, so I can go to code words of length two. I can give B uh, two bits. D is the least frequent. I can give it also a code word of length two, let's say zero one. Okay, so this is a greedy algorithm. Sort the letters in increasing order and decreasing order of their frequency and go through these letters based on this order, give them the shortest possible code available. Okay, so at the beginning we have zero available, then we go to one, then we go to zero, zero, then zero, one. If for example, the letter E was there and its frequency is two million, then E takes the code word one, one. If we had F, that frequency has one million, then it's it's a code word for f is one one uh, one zero for example or one one, but once we run out, once we have a b c d e f, and we have for example the letter g that appears five hundred thousand times, then g now has to have a code word of length three zero 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 and so on. So this now, if I look at this, what what would be the length of the encoding? So now A appears 80 million times, 80 million times, and the length of its code word is one. Each one of these uh, times is gonna be encoded by one letter. This is 80 million. C is, uh, is, two, uh, C is 40 million times, and also its, its code word is one. Okay, so this is the code word, the length. Now B is 20 million times, but it's now two bits for its code word. And what we have now, D is five million, but each one of them is gonna be replaced by two bits. So now we have 80 million plus 40 million plus 40 million plus 10 million here, okay? So we added basically the number of bits is, we had what, 140, five and now we added five and twenty hundred seventy million so now we went to hundred seventy million bits okay so we now encode the whole thing in hundred seventy million bits which is much better than 290 million bits so one can say okay this is much better why don't we go with this i hope you immediately see what the problem is because Encoding is one direction, but we need to decode, right? So someone gives you a binary string and say, can you decode it back for me? What do you do? So imagine that under this encoding, so imagine under this encoding here, someone gives you the binary string, let's say 0001, and say, can you decode? Can you tell me what this string is? Under the fixed one, under the fixed one here, so we had this, all of them of length two. Zero, 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 0001 has to be decoded. At the zero, 00 is A, the zero, 01 is B. So under that, this is A, B, right? Because the A is zero, 00 and the B is zero, 01. So decoding is 
is unique, well defined, and it's uh, and we get the uh, AB. So zero 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 one is AB under this encoding. But what about this new one here? Well, now we run into a problem because zero 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 one can be treated as a a a c. This is one possibility. I can each one of the the zeros is an a and one is a c. Another possibility is. I can look at the 0, 0 as B and the 0, 1 as D. This is B, D. Another possibility is that the 0, 0 is B and the 0 is A and the 1 is C. It's B, A, C, and so on. So now you see the problem that, yes, I got a shorter representation or binary encoding of W under this variable length, a variable length code word, but the problem is that decoding becomes a problem. I cannot decode this uniquely. And this is where Hoffman coding comes into the picture. Hoffman coding is about giving variable length code words. We don't want to assume, we don't want to give the same code word to all the letters. We want to give them code words according to their frequencies. But also we want the decoding to be unique. Going from the binary string to the letters, we want that to be unique. Okay, so the way the way Huffman, Huffman coding works is the basic assumption of Huffman coding. Okay, so now we go to Huffman coding. Is that it is about variable length, variable length code words. In other words, we don't have to have the same length for all binary representations of all letters. You know, A can be two bits and uh, D can be 15 bits. Okay, this is what I mean by variable length. The second thing, which is the most the, the important constraint or feasibility constraint that is put uh, by, by Hoffman coding is the notion of prefix free encoding. Prefix free encoding. If you think about the previous one here, what was the issue with this? Why were we getting why were we getting three possible uh, in, uh, decodings here? Because we can look at zero 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 one and we can say, well, maybe this is three A's, maybe this is one A followed by one C followed by one B and so on. And prefix free encoding doesn't allow for this to happen by saying that no code word no code word is allowed to be a prefix of another code word another code word okay so if you look at this coding here a is 0 c let's look at it again if a is 0 c is 1 b is 0 1 and D is one zero. This is a problem here because A is a prefix of B. A zero is a prefix of zero one. C is a prefix of D. Okay, so this is not allowed under Hoffman coding. We don't allow something like this. So now we want to give, we want to give the, the symbols uh, different codes with different lengths, but no two are are uh, prefix so you know one example let's say an example is a can be zero when a is zero it means that the other three letters cannot start with zero because if they start with zero a will be a prefix so now b has to start with one c has to start with one d has to start with one but now we need to distinguish them c we said c for example is the uh which one c was the the, the second most frequent so imagine that i give c is one one here and B, which one was them? B is the, the third most frequent. Imagine that B is one zero zero and D is one zero one. So if you look at these three here, now A is not the prefix of any of the three, B is not the prefix of any of the three, C is not the prefix of any of the other three, D is not the prefix of any of three. So this would be a fine uh, code that's variable length and none of the code words is a prefix of the other. But now we need to go back to our original problem that we want the encoding, the encoding of W to be the, the shortest possible, okay? So now we want that if I have the count for every letter, so I have the count for A and count of B, so I want the count of A times the length 
of the code for A, let's say, for example, the code for A, um, let's say alpha A. So alpha of A is the code, the number of bits in the encoding of A. We want this plus C of B times the length of the encoding of B plus the count of C times the length of the encoding of C plus the count of D times the length of the encoding of D. We want this, this value, to be minimum, minimum over all encodings alpha. Okay, so if you come up with a different alpha, you know, A is 0, 0, and B is 1, 1, 1, and so on. We want this value to be the smallest. So this is the optimality function in, in that Huffman coding goes after, okay? So it wants to find binary codes for the letters, and the binary codes can be of different lengths. But then when we turn that or the, the, the input string into a binary string under this encoding, we want the resulting binary string to be of the shortest possible length, okay? So how does, what is the, the, the binary, or sorry, the greedy algorithm for Huffman? It's the following. So Huffman encoding algorithm works as, as follows. So in the first step, it creates, so again, imagine here the input, sorry, let me actually write it a bit cleaner. So the input is in letters. So these are the letters that will appear in the alphabet in the string okay in my in the, my example so far i have been using n equal four a b c d but it can be any n and the frequencies let's call them the frequencies or counts and frequencies of the n letters the n So let's f1, f2, fn, okay? So f1 is the frequency of letter one, f2 is the frequency of letter two, and so on. And remember that the, and the output is code words, code words, let's call them c1, c2 to cn, such that the sum of ci times fi for i equal one to n is minimum. Okay, so if you think about it, you know how is Huffman coding is going to work? Uh, we showed one greedy algorithm that didn't work because it caused this problem of decoding is not unique by saying let's sort in decreasing in uh, decreasing order by the f's by the frequencies, and assign the shortest code by that order. That is problematic. Hoffman coding does it in a smarter way that results in prefix-free code. And that is optimal in terms of the value of this uh, sum of ci times fi. So Hoffman coding algorithm works by first create in trees t1, t2, tn, each consisting of a single node, a single node, and that node and the node has the sum, the frequency in uh, of the letter for the node for the that corresponds to that node, and the node has the frequency, and the node in. 3ti has the frequency fi, okay? So the algorithm will say start by saying, okay, let's start in trees, one, two, all the way to n. And this one here will have the frequency f1, and this will have the frequency f2, and this will have fn, okay? So we'll start with n trees. Each one of them has exactly one node in it, which is a root node, and it has the frequency. Two, we will do the following is that repeat repeat the following until repeat until we have a single tree okay so we are going to start now merging trees okay so we have n individual trees we are going to merge them 
two at a time. Okay, so we will take two, merge them, we go to n minus one trees, then we will take two, merge them, we go to n minus two trees, and so on. At, at the end, we have one tree. Okay, repeat until we have the following. Find two trees. Find two trees with the smallest way, with the smallest, with the smallest frequency at their roots and and create and make them the children of a new tree whose root has the sum of the two frequencies. Okay, so imagine that the algorithm finds that if i, the tree that has if i, and the tree that has if j, these are have the lowest, uh, the the smallest uh, frequencies. Okay, and now we basically take these two trees and create a new tree where with a new root that whose children are these trees f i and f j and the weight here will be f i plus f j okay and then we just repeat doing this we continue doing this okay so let us go back to our example to illustrate this here uh, so imagine that in my case that a has frequency 0.35 okay i want to turn things into frequencies now b has frequency 0.1 c has frequency 0.2 d has frequency 0.2 let's say okay so what does the algorithm say let's find so the algorithm works uh, the first step is going to create a this is a tree for a a tree for b tree for c and a tree for d and the frequencies are going to be 0.35 and for b 0.1 for c 0.2 and for d 0.2 so this is the first step the second step it says find two no two trees in this that has the smallest values in their root so if i look at this that's one of them b has to be one of them it's the smallest and then i need to make uh, an arbitrary choice between c and d imagine that i take c here so now a doesn't change it is 0.35 now i take b b and c and i make them as two children of the with the new root where the frequency at that new root is the sum of the frequencies of b and c so this becomes 0.3 and c and d sorry is still there so now we went to three trees the tree that corresponds to a the tree that corresponds to b and c the tree that corresponds to d we repeat the second the, the next step is let me find of these three trees which two of them have the smallest frequencies well we find that it is one is 0.2 and one is 0.3 and one point i didn't make there when i took b and c it doesn't mean it doesn't matter you can make b the left and c the right child or or uh, c the left and b the right child Okay, so now I will look at B and C and, and D. These are the two smallest, so A remains here as 0.35 as a tree by itself. And now we take B, C, and D. Just so that I create a different uh, scenario here, I will make B, C actually the right child. So I add, that, I add this. So this is B, C, and this is D. So the new the new uh, node the new root has uh, two children d as the left child and the other one is the tree that has b and c so d had we know that d had 0.2 here and the other one had 0.3 so this is going to have 0.5 okay so this is what we get now and the last step i don't have much choice here we create we create a new node here whose left child is a and this is 0.35 and here we have this 0.5 and b here no sorry this is d and this child here is b and c 
Okay, so this is the the second step of of Hoffman encoding, and the third step of Hoffman encoding, the third step, is we basically give for the for every node. For every node, label the left edge zero and label the right edge one. So if I do this for this tree here, I label this is left zero, the right is one, left is zero, right is one, left is zero, and right is one. And then the fourth step here, the fourth step. The code word for letter, whatever we want to call it, letter X, is the binary string on the path from the root to the leaf labeled by X. Okay? So the last step, now I get the code words from this. So if I, if you look at that tree there, for every letter, you have a path from the root to the, the leaf that's labeled by that letter. Just take the, the zeros and ones on that path to be the code word. So if I look at A, the path from the root to A has one edge that's labeled by zero. If I look at B, I follow the path from the root to B. I come this way and this way, I followed right, right, left, so it's one, one, zero. And if I look at C, I went right, 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 okay? So right child from the root, then right child from the child, then right child from the grandchild to get to C, it is one, one, one. If I look at D, then we go from the root to the right child and from the right child to the left child to get to D, it is one, zero. And this will be the code, the code words obtained by Huffman coding here, okay? Now, if you look at these, as, and you look at the or length of the original W, and you encode it in a binary way according to this, that you replace A by zero, you replace A, B by one, one, zero, you replace C by one, 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 and D by one, zero. This is guaranteed to give you the shortest possible binary encoding of the original W over all possible prefix-free code words, okay? And this is basically the algorithm. Uh, it is greedy in the, in the following sense here. In the very first step, in the, very first, in the first step, we created the trees with their weights. There's nothing greedy there. In the second step, this is where we make the greedy thing here. So the algorithm is working by making the least frequent letter the deepest in the tree. The least frequency letters are going to become the deepest in the tree. The most frequency letters are going to be the shallowest in the tree. So here, when we looked at this example, for example, B was the least frequent. And if you look at it in the tree, it is the deepest. Okay, The depth of B is 3. I had to take 3 edges to get to it. If you look at A, it's the, sh it's the most frequent and it is the shallowest. The depth of A is just 1. Okay. And this is the greedy choice that Hoffman coding algorithm does. And it does it again by taking the least frequent letters, making them as a subtree, then continuing this. What's the running time of this algorithm? Again, first building these trees, uh, building these trees here. This is O of, of N, nothing fancy, right? We just wanna build N trees. This now will take O of N log N, n log n if, if repeating this multiple times this will take us n log n if you again use a min heap to keep the the letters with their frequencies in the min heap so that at the top of the heap you always have the least frequent uh, letter or the root with the least frequent the smallest frequency in it in that uh, structure so this is an o of n log n greedy algorithm that will produce the optimal code words, variable length code words that are prefix free for encoding uh, uh, any string of over n letters, over n different letters into a binary string, okay? As I said, I will not uh, prove correctness of this algorithm, but I highly encourage you to prove the correctness of this algorithm. As we talked about it before, 
to prove the correctness, again, follow the same technique. Assume that this is not, uh, this is not optimal and let T be the tree built by Hoffman coding and look at another tree that for the sake of contradiction we assume exists and has better encoding and focus on the first point at which they disagree. So for example, for example, if, if this is the tree built by Hoffman coding, something like this, and both focus on this, and now we took this tree and merged it with this under, in Hoffman coding, but we merged it with something else under the other optimal solution, show that you can actually do the swap between the optimal solution and what Hoffman would give us to obtain the same tree that would be returned by Hoffman coding. Again, to repeat, assume that Hoffman coding algorithm doesn't give us the optimal solution. For, look at the tree, consider the tree that Hoffman coding gave us. Look at another, that's call it T, look at another tree U that someone claims is better than the tree given by Hoffman coding. Focus on the very first merger of two trees that T and U disagree on and show that you can actually swap the decision that was made to create U by the decision that was made by Hoffman coding algorithm and you can obtain even a better solution. If, if either the same or a better solution in terms of the length of the code words.